Today we're gonna take a look at the Wilds of Eldrain set. This is uh, this is the sequel to one of the more powerful sets in Magic: The Gathering history. The, the set that originally had Oko, Thief of Crowns, most powerful planeswalker ever printed. So uh, hopefully they don't blow up Magic again. We're gonna start off with the cheeky house mouse. We have a white mana two one creature already power creep alert. It's as big as a savannah lions for crying out loud. How does that match up? Is this mouse like something from uh, R.L. Stein? Okay, squeak by. It's okay. We they brought the adventures back. Adventure is back. We're going to pay a white, a sorcerer, adventure. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. It can't be blocked by creatures with power three or greater this turn. I love the flavor. That is on point. Uh, card sort of sucks, but uh, I, I, a good limited card. And it's cute. And I like that they're bringing mice. Yeah, this looks like a house pet. Not a lot of cute cards in Magic the Gathering. Everything's pretty intimidating and evil and ugly. Uh, I can't get it out of my head. Look at this. You could have this as a pet. All the, all the rats. I guess this is supposed to be a mouse. This is a mouse or a rat. Whatever. All right. Move. <laughs> any, any experts on rats and mice, let us all know. Okay, we got uh, Vagilis Fear with Restless Cottage. Uh, oh yeah, the new creature lands. Enters the battlefield tap, add Golgari colors. So black or green. All right, so for... Uh, black, green, two generic, Restless Cottage becomes a 4-4 black and green horror creature until end of turn. It's still a land. Whenever Restless Cottage attacks, create a food token and exile up to one target card from a graveyard. That is damn good. Uh, I think that is definitely a playable card. You've got life... Okay, burn players already hate the look of this. They're like, oh my god. Again, with the life gain? Because food tokens gain you life. And it's... It's like a main deck of graveyard hate. No, you don't get it immediately. I mean, you gotta wait till like turn five to activate it. But still, it is just gradual value. And everyone uses the graveyard. Who doesn't use the graveyard out there? I don't use the graveyard, to be honest, but you know, whatever. Uh, great card. Turia with Elusive Otter. Did they bring the otters back? Okay, we got, we're getting more, uh, eventually maybe they can make a typal deck out of this thing. Look at that art. It's a blue 1-1 one, one with prowess. Oh, no. Creatures with power less than Elusa's power can't block it either. What the hell are they doing? And like, this is going to slot right into the blue-red prowess deck. This card's insane. Power less than, and this thing's just going to be enormous. Because you, you play this deck with like a bunch of cantrips and maybe some pump spells and burn spells, removal spells. It's going to get to like 4, 4, 5, 5. You can't do anything to it. Whatever. Grove's Bounty. So it's a Simic card. We got for a green X, Sorcery Adventure. Distribute X plus 1 plus 1 counters among any number of target creatures you control. Uh, then exile this card. You may cast the... Uh, yeah, you can uh, cast it from, le from later. From, a, from the exile zone. It's not exiled for forever. We do need more otters. Uh, no, no spoilers for me. Sorry, I can't watch. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. No, I don't get it. I don't understand the... I mean, these are official spoilers. These aren't even leaks. Anyway. Yeah, see you tomorrow. A fixed Corvold? I don't even know what Cor Corvold is. Anyway, this card is... This card might be busted. I like, I think even without the green part, this is pretty good. This is damn good. Like most, I guess the only problem with this card is one toughness. That's the only thing keeping it in line. And you know, one toughness creatures, they're in trouble. They're going extinct. They got to stand up to like Ren and Six and Lava Dart and Plague Engineer and like a million other things. Uh, fire from Fire and Ice. Int, I think Cast Into the Fire is also one of those cards. But anyway, uh, outside of that, I think the prowess ability attached to the fact that it can be unblockable is insane. Just insane. Uh, okay, we got Neon Gray with Regal... Regal Bunicorn. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Sounds like a... It is some sort of Bunicorn. What is that weird thing coming out of its head? We have a white one generic star star rabbit unicorn. Regal Bunicorn's power and toughness are each equal to the number of non-land permanents you control. You don't say. I have absolutely no idea how to evaluate this card. 
This card could be insane or it could be completely worthless. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of non-land permanents. So it's going to be at least a 1-1. One, one. It's funny how much exploration they've done with card design and yet we don't own we don't have a card like this up until now. It's entirely peaceful as long as you don't try to pet it. Pen it, take its food, take its hide, sit on sit on its grass or dress it up in colorful garb for human holidays. This uh, sounds like something from, um, ugh, what's that rabbit? The white rabbit from the movie. And it killed, and the rabbit killed everyone. Oh, it's a bunny. Oh, it's nothing. Charge. Retreat. Retreat. We're all dying. Monty Python. That's right. Cosmic Seeds. You got it. It's just, it reminds me of the uh, Monty Python skit. Retreat. Retreat. And then the, the bunny is just full of blood, but it's like completely unharmed. Search for the Holy Grail. That's right. Uh, I imagine that this card's gonna suck. It's just like, it's just a bad Tarmogoyf. That's all I, that's all I think it's gonna be. You need a lot of permanents on the, non-land permanents on the battlefield to make it work. I could be totally wrong. Because maybe in some sort of token generator deck, this card would be, uh, insane. But I would say it needs to be proven to me, and I haven't seen it proven just yet. Okay, uh... Was that Alexa? No, it's my stupid Siri. Siri always answers me answers questions I never asked. Grunkus with the super chat. Candy Grapple. I just think it's funny. Let's look at Candy Grapple. Not it's unlike the candy apples, right? Oh my god, it <laughs> finally the food took a bite out of you! It's a black one generic instant with bargain. You may sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token as you cast the spell. Target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. If the spell was bargained, the creature gets minus five, minus five until end of turn. I think this card is crap. It's just a bad removal spell. Don't you mean poisonous? There's no such thing as a venomous arg. Oh, I see. Here's a poison apple. That's uh, it's, it's, it's but but it, it took a bite out of his arm. All right, now we go to King Jinder. Beseech the mirror. Broken with the one ring. Oh, we have a combo, do we? Uh, I like the look of this picture. We got a black, 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 one generic sorcery. Again with bargain. So new mechanic. Sack, artifact, enchantment, or token as you cast the spell. To get, I guess, some extra effect. Search your library for a card. Exile it face down, then shuffle. If the spell was bargained, you may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. That spell's mana value is four or less. Put the exiled card into your hand if it wasn't cast this way. Uh, okay, so you exile it face down, and then if you bargain, you cast it. If you don't bargain, you, uh, yeah, I, I get it. So, but what one ring deck will play this? Maybe, actually, do you know what? In Legacy, it would see play. So you could play Beseech the Mirror, probably sack, like, I don't know, um, one of your, like, Mox Opal, you could Mox Opal, Mox, uh, Chromox. There's a lot of artifacts in, you, even a Lotus Petal if you have it up. And uh, I guess tutor a one ring right into play. This card probably is going to be busted. Beseech the yeah, beseech the ring. Who needs the mirror when we got the whole ring here? This deserves some sort of flavor text, but no room for it. That's too bad. All right, Nalia says, Nikachu, what do you think about Spreading Seas reprint being banned in Arena? I think that has nothing to do with this show, but I think it's stupid. They know how powerful Ma uh, Merfolk is. Zack with Ag uh, Agatha's Soul Cauldron. They got them souls in here, do they? All right, two mana, legendary artifact. You may spend mana as though it were a mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control. As though it were a mana. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Creatures you control get with plus one, plus one counters on them. Have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. That is like, sounds off, it sounds awkward. Have activated of all creature cards, so you tap exile target creature from a graveyard. When a creature card is exiled this way, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. I think it sounds janky. It's like, okay, you need to, you, your stuff needs to die, or you need to mill it into the graveyard. Then you need to exile it, and then you need to put counters on your creatures. I think it's a lot of work. The cauldron is broken. People already have like three 
combos. Okay, I mean, if it's broken, uh, I gotta see it to believe it. Maybe I'm wrong, but this is like, it looks so convoluted. I'll give it this, like, it doesn't cost that much to activate. Like, it's two mana, it's a two mana artifact. It doesn't cost any mana to tap it. So, it's got that going for it. But you still gotta put counters on stuff. Oh, oh no, I guess it makes its own counters. When a creature card is exiled away, put a counter on target creature you control. From a graveyard. This is what, like someone else's graveyard? You're gonna, sw you're gonna swipe the abilities of your opponents? <laughs> okay, well, show me. That's all I'm gonna say. You gotta show me. Sh give me you, you bring it on for the bad combos that actually work. Maybe it'll end up being a good combo. Uh, Abzo with H H Heldra? What? Hildra? Is it just Hydra? I'm gonna assume it's Hydra Ice Mommy. Okay, it wasn't. Okay, I'll just look up Ice Mommy. It was Hil Hilda? Like, this card doesn't exist. I don't... Oh, Mummy, maybe? Ice Mummy? This is an old card. Okay, well, okay, moving on. Sorry, I couldn't find your card. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, does Commander count for this stream? Yes. If there's, like, new Eldraine cards from those Commander sets, I'll accept that. We got Platonic Liquid with Time Stream Navigator. Navigating its way on this show. Oh, Zach says the last combo will Cauldron with Walking Blista or Kenrith. Walking Blista. I can sort of see that. Oh, is this supposed to combo with this thing as well? Ascent, this is not also not on. What are you people doing? Okay, I don't know. You... Moving on. I need Hilda. Hilda? Okay, let's look up Hilda. I'll just look up Hilda. Oh, I see. You're calling her mommy. Is that what your mom looks like? Okay, we have white, blue, two generic, three, four human warlock. Whenever you tap an untapped creature an opponent controls, you may pay one. Whenever you tap an untapped creature an opponent controls, I can pay one. When you do, so when I like ice something down, I can grant a 4-4 white and blue animal creature token. That's not bad. That's pretty beefy. I can put a counter on each creature I control. Eh, it's meh. Scry tooth and draw a card. That's busted. So I tap stuff down and I get to basically dig for anything that I want. Scrying two is pretty deep. If it's two crappy cards, well, then you basically scry three cards deep because then you're just going to draw the next card. This card's pretty neat. I like it. I like the value. Uh, Sebastian, tell me all about it. Uh, don't you miss Twitch's emotes? Not everyone here has the truffle add-ons to see the Keck W's and the Papegas and stuff. I got my own emotes! Which people usually don't use. Show off your emotes, you subscribers. You subscribe, you get access to, like, four or five emotes. Okay, Tommy Siddons, Corv... Uh, Corvolf? Yeah, finally, Icy Manipulator Synergy. Why can't we find anything today? Or is this a new Corvold card? So this is from Wilds of Eldrain Commander. It counts! Okay, uh, we got Jund, 5 generic for a 4-4 four, four Dragon Noble. It's a dr it dr okay, it Dragon. I need a roar sound effect here. Do I have a roar sound effect? It's the closest thing I have to nature making some sound. Uh, 4-4, four, four. this spell costs one less to cast for each card type among permanents. You've sacrificed this turn. That just sounds bad. Uh, Flying Trample and Haste. That's good. When it deals damage to a player, put X plus one plus one counters on Corvold and draw X cards. Where X is the number of permanent types among cards in your graveyard. Okay, that's pretty strong. It's eight mana, though. Whatever, but it is going to cost one for less. You have to sack it that turn? What a weird stipulation. Got to sack my stuff, keep track of all the card types that were sacked this turn, get a uh, get a discount. Anyway. Okay, Toads with uh, Emo Dane the Pyro Hammer. The Hammer! Shapiro! Anyone from the States remember that guy? I'm Jim! The Hammer! Shapiro! I will sue people into the ground! 
And what I got? We got Imodan the Pyromancer, also with the hammer. Okay, uh, red, red, two generic for a 4 4 human knight. Whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control that targets only a single creature deals damage to that creature, they'll make sure you get comp compensated. I fight for you, because I'm Imodan the Hammer, Pyro Hammer. Imodan deals that much damage to each opponent. Okay, so this is. Rod, uh, my my friend Rodney Top A Thompson is gonna play this card. He loves all the burn. He's got the mono red like burn commander deck. Whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control that targets only a single creature deals damage to that creature. It's like it turns everything into a searing blaze. I hate these cards. They just usually blow me away. The realm needs a ruler, not a boy playing king. All right then. Uh, that's going to be my new commander. Mono red is a slippery slope. Once you go red, you get frustrated when you don't kill your opponents. Also, I, I don't, I'm not certain, but I think like if you have like a mono red deck, when it, you you can end up being uh, becoming part the target really quickly when it's clear that you can deal like quadruple the amount of damage from your uh, uh, quadruple amount of damage from your cards, like this guy. All right, Stetson Hershey, the elusive otter. Did we look at that one? How many otters are in this set? Elusive? I wrote down elusive. How many? Uh, is it illusion otter? Come on, people. Do you know? Do you know the names of the cards? I know it's a new set, so like maybe we don't really know what these cards are. Okay, uh, oh, it's elusive. Do you know what? We both don't know how to spell, but we did this one already. It's a great card. Uh, it could be borderline busted. Could be borderline broken. David Williard! Eldraine is awesome, but I'm still waiting for a series of cards that happen to actually depict every single one of these planes as a map. That is an interesting idea that they haven't done yet. Okay, we got Christopher B with Kellen. Is it, all these cards just have like regular weird names? Kellen the Fey Blooded. This is this a fairy? Oh, it's a human fairy. Okay. I am your fairy godfather. You have three wishes. It's a red, two generic, two, two human fairy with double strike, but no flying. That's a little bizarre. Uh, other creatures you control get plus one plus zero for each aura and equipment attached to uh, Kellen the Fey Blooded. So it's like a human with the blood of a fairy. Uh, very strange. Half fey, half human. It's a hat man. Uh, is it a hat? Ah, I see no hat actually here. Okay, we have, but we have an adventure. The Birthright Boon. For a white one generic sorcery, search your library for an aura equipment card, reveal it, and put your hand in shuffle. This card is just a little too jank for me. I have a feeling there is probably a lot of people are going to enjoy this. It is a... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is just a tutor with complete upside. Like, you look for an aura or equipment card and you literally have a random 2-2 two -two double striker. You know what? I take it back. It's not, it's not bad. Uh, I could see, like, we do have equipment tutors for one mana at instant speed. But maybe this is good enough if you're playing an equipment deck in red. You want the tutor anyway, right? You know you're going to play the tutor, and you just have a random 2-2 two -two double striker body on, attached to it. Next super chat, we got Jacob Thune. What do you got for us today? Frolicking Familiar. Everyone has a hat. Everybody! Oh, even the otter! Oh, this is cute. Okay, we have a blue 2 generic 2-2 two -two flying otter. What the hell? Whenever... <laughs> it's magic, folks! Whenever something doesn't make any sense, just remember, this is Magic the Gathering. Anyone can cast a spell and make anything happen. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Frolicking Familiar gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So that's very close to prowess, but not exactly prowess. It's like crappier prowess. And in the same set as prowess. Then we got Blow Off Steam. What is this, Otter Get Pissed? We have a red instant. Blow Off Steam deals one damage to any target. It's a burn spell! It's the absolute crappiest burn spell of all burn spells. I don't think it's any good. Picture is a 10 out of 10, though. Love the picture. The Otter deck, it's starting to come together. We just need to go back to Eldraine uh, as many times as we've gone back to Ravnica, and the Otter deck will build itself. 
Silvercations, picklock prankster. What does that mean, picklock prankster? Like, you pick locks. Do you know what was the worst prank? When some moron in school would put, like, a lead pencil in the lock of a classroom keyhole and then break it off. And they thought it was so funny, but then nobody can get in the door anymore, you moron. I have a feeling everyone probably has experienced that at least once in their life. It's like the, it's just a classic dumb moron thing to do. It's level zero, I don't know, middle school idea. Picklock Prankster, blue one generic for a one three fairy rogue. Vigilance and flying, not bad. Free, uh, free the fey, blue one generic instant. Mill four cards, then put an instant sorcery or fairy card from among your cards into your hand. I think it is weak as hell. It's a bad card in general, and I am not spending two mana to, I don't know, sort of mill and find more stuff. Is it common? Might see playing Popper. No, it's uncommon. It's not, even, not even, not even Popper playable. Erland is like glad I was homeschooled. Uh, okay, apparently Sir, Sir Ginger, you people with uh, the meal ender. Uh, too generic for the three one. Uh, oh, is this the the gingerbread woman who wants to get revenge? Legendary artifact creature, Food Knight, Seer Ginger. The meal ender has trample, hexproof, and haste. As long as his opponent controls a planeswalker, whenever another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on Seer Ginger and scry one. Pay two, sac sacrifice Seer Ginger. You gain life equal to its power. It's a 3-1 creature for 2 mana. That's pretty big. This trample, hexproof, and haste as long as an opponent controls a planeswalker. Ah, oh, I get it. Because, uh, what's it called? Garrick ate her, I don't know, boyfriend, friend, something. Something was going on there. They were, they were very happy together, and then one guy got eaten. So, when, the, when she sees a planeswalker, they're evil. <laughs> get them! Get them planeswalkers. Very flavorful in there. Great in food deck. I guess so. Also great in the food decks. Flick a coin. Is that a real card? Just what we need. More one toughness hate cards. Oh, really? Okay, red two generic instant. Flick a coin deals one damage to any target. I hate it. You create a treasure token. I hate that too. And you draw a card. But is it playable? I don't even, I don't even know if this is playable. It's like... It might be playable in Popper. Maybe we'll see Popper play. That's a lot of value. And Popper is all about the value. Oh yeah, ping off that one toughness creature and get like a treasure token and draw a card. This probably actually we'll see play in Popper. Looks like a real Popper card. Shows the tokens. Was there tokens for this last one? No, is there tokens for I I can't see the tokens. Uh, okay, Jacob also says look at rat, rat, catcher, trainee. A lot of red cards in this set. Okay, uh, two mana for a 2-1. As long as your turn, rat, catcher, trainee has first strike. And it's got pest problem. This person looks incredibly overdressed for their profession. All they do is catch rats. Uh, instant adventure. Create two one one black rat creature tokens with this creature can't block. So you now control the rats. You took them. Now they're yours. I guess. <laughs> this card... I think this card sucks. Whoops. Three mana for like a 1-1 one, one creatures. And I guess you get another 2-1 involved as well. Whatever. Liquid Soulfly with Gumdrop Poisoner. Black 2 generic, 3 2 uh, human warlock lifelink. When Gumdrop Poisoner enters the battlefield, up to one target creature gets minus X, minus X until in turn. Where X is the amount of life you gain this turn. That's not bad. Uh, hard to activate the life gain. Uh, unless you can make food, tempt with treats. I can't say that word too out loud, otherwise my cat will uh, come running here. Uh, create a food token. So it's like trick or treating. You create, But more treat than trick. Uh, I think this card is fine-ish. It's not great. Like, maybe it'll make some standard play or something. 
A Grand Fatso. I, I really can't like these adventure cards in which the adventure costs more than the creature. That's what I, that's how it is sometimes. You never know. Sometimes that adventure is very expensive. You would have to search for treasure and food tokens. Oh, so they have new food tokens. Sorry, I'm not doing that. Food tokens. Get a... Get, get a get a plus. They pass. David says, is it me or most of these cards in the set have an adventure mechanic? Well, I mean, it's a good mechanic. I like I like the adventure mechanic. It means you don't flood out. Like you are sorry, are you so you don't get screwed on cards. You always have something to do. I like that aspect of Magic the Gathering right now. Like when you die, you still die with cards in your hand. You had things to do. Uh okay, Abzo with Talion. Uh, which Talion? The Talion? Maybe Talion? Oh, probably probably the Talion. There's a lot of Talion cards out there, Abzo. Okay, uh, black, blue, two generic for a three, four. Talion the Kindly Lord. It's a fairy noble. Flying. As, ta as, as Talion the Kindly Lord enters the battlefield, choose a number between one and ten. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with mana value, power, uh, or toughness equal to the chosen number that player loses two life and you draw a card that's insane oh, but it's like more of a prison card it's a type of, wait, but you probably can play those cards and it's four mana for three four it's got flying hmm it's not bad it might have massive upside for all i know Tonic Liquid loves the adventures. I like the adventures that are more expensive than the creatures. It makes you have to choose whether to hold on to it or maintain the tempo. You got that right. There's a fairy in the last Eldraine set. It was like blue, blue for a 2-1 creature, but the adventure was three mana to counter a spell. So I thought that was pretty matter. That, that was pretty neat. Jonathan. Akai, Akai I've, uh, I've only ever seen men with beards and painted nails call themselves Seer. Akai. This is supposed to be a card that. This is a card. This is a real card. Okay. Uh. Or Lekai? No. Okay. I don't know who people are talking about. You lost me. Uh. Okay. Jenny. Jenny with a Agatha of the Vile Cauldron. Vile it is. Oh my goodness. This gives me like Asmorano, Marduka, Dasna, Kultikar vibes. It's the same pose. It's identical. As Morano. Oops. Uh, as As Morano. There we go. See? Very similar. In my opinion, is the same artist Ryan Pancost? No, it's a different one. Plagiarism, in my opinion. Same pose. Okay. Uh, green, red for a one-one human warlock. What is a warlock? This is not how I picture a warlock. Uh, activated abilities of creatures you control cost X less to activate, where X is Agatha of the Vile Cauldron's power. This effect can't reduce the mana in that cost to less than one mana. So you still gotta pay one mana. You pay. It cost you at least one. Okay, uh, four mana and uh, Gruel. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain trample and haste until end of turn. I think this, uh, I don't know, it's probably a good combo card to finish off your opponents if you have infinite mana. But I don't know, it's, it's a bit weird in my opinion. I knew Orion Pancost, he is dead now. Oh god. I'm sorry to hear that. Okay, we're gonna look at more Wild of Eldraine cards. But you know where you can get them from? Get them from Fusion Ga uh, FusionGamingOnline.com. You see that? Wilds of, Wilds of Eldraine, pre-order or buy your singles or sealed product. The sealed product can only be delivered in Canada because it is a Canadian store. But the singles, they'll send anywhere. Maybe even into Antarctica. I don't know what the shipping cost will be. That might, you have to pay through the nose. And when you are pre-ordering your cards, your wonderful squeaky mice and hat-wearing uh, adventure creatures, don't forget to use coupon code Nikachu at checkout for 5% off all your purchases. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting magic cards online. And if you want to play with the new spicy cards from Wild of Eldraine in your Pioneer Standard Modern Vintage Legacy or Popper deck, uh, don't buy them in paper yet until you know that they work. Rent them online with Mana Traders, then when you know they work, then you can commit to buying them in the real world. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore 73V. 
It's always good, always good to test them cards out with mana traders. All right, we need more cards here. Fred, have there ever been any modern playable cards? I have no idea. I only these days I only know a modern playable card once I see it in modern. So when I boot up modern, play modern, and I see a new card, uh, okay, I'm like, okay, that's probably modern playable now. The most shocking one in recent memory was uh, Leyline Binding. I was like, what the hell is this? Leyline Binding is that enchantment for basically one white that exiles any non-land permanent on the battlefield. Uh, and I'm also told there's no witch creature type. Well, witches have the warlock creature type. Ah, that is weird. Why can't we use witch? There must be some political reason for this. Uh, okay, we'll look at Troyan. There's a lot of names that sound almost like a regular name here. Okay, we got a blue, green, one generic, one, three, Videlkin Scout. Since when are Videlkins on Eldraine? I didn't even think that was a creature type here. Tap, add Simic. Spend this mana only to cast spells with mana value five or greater, where spells with X in their mana cost. That could be broken. Okay, pay a blue, tap, draw a card, then discard a card. That's probably fine. Neat card. And it's legendary, so it could be your commander. Toads with Goose Mother. A play Whoa, what is going on here? It's a Hydra. It's like it's like a Canadian goose that went Hydra. Okay, it's a blue-green X. It's a 2-2 two -two creature flying. When Goose Mother enters the battlefield... Sorry, Goose Mother enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. The, when the Goose Mother enters the battlefield, create half X food tokens rounded up. When Goose Mother attacks, you may sacrifice a food if you do draw a card. That's a great ability. See, the thing is, you don't even need to make food with the Goose Mother to get value off of the card draw. Exchanging food for uh, cards? That's in, It's like basically turning them into clues. And you don't even have to pay mana for it. The Goose Mother is terrifying. I hate it. Was it a Goose? Yeah, it was a Goose. Geese in like Canada, they'll attack you. They're gonna come after you. I was once just walking down the sidewalk and there's geese everywhere. And this guy, he was so far away, but he was just beelining it for me. Like he's sort of, I'm moving forward. And he's coming at me at an angle, but he's coming straight for me with his, his wings out and the legs. Could have been she, I don't know. And then I basically, wait, as he got really close, as he got, as the goose got really close, I had to like basically run into the street and around him. So I had to outpace the damn thing. The, the geese are aggressive. They'll get you. I don't, I don't even know what, what they were defending. I, I was so far away from the stupid goose. All right, what do we got next here? To tell me, toilet duck. Curse of the were folk. Were were fox. They're pretty territorial when they have young around. Well, I didn't see any young. This, this goose was a complete loner. Curse of the Werefox. A green to generic sorcery. Create a monster roll token attached to target creature you control. This is like some sort of weird aura. When you do that, when you do, that creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. So just a fight card, right? Control another roll on it. Put that onto the into the graveyard. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has trample. The rolls go in the graveyard? If you control another roll on it, put that one into the graveyard. Are these tokens that literally exist in the graveyard? Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has trample. Creatures that fight each deal damage equal to their power. I have no idea how rolls work. I'm confused. But whatever. Magus of the Bargain says, There are three cards with witch in the name that are, t are type cleric. Ah, I see. Well, I guess there's many different types of witches. They're warlocks, they're clerics. Rolls are aura tokens, but why do they go to the? Oh, hold on. Do they stay? They do they effectively go to the graveyard and then disappear like other tokens, or do they like? Is it literally in the graveyard? Because that would be the first time a token goes to the graveyard. Uh, space pirate roll. We playing. We we playing town of Salem. I have no idea what that is. 
Ak oh, Akai, you're the person who got like, oh, someone was talking about you earlier. Okay, Panda TV. You asked why Ag Agatha's soul cauldron was broken earlier. Ah, oh, gotcha. Um, okay, let's look at King Ginger's Moon Shaker Calvary. Crater Hoof and White. Oh, I heard about that. Uh, I heard about, is it called Moon Shaker? Moon, sh it is called Moon. Okay, Moon Shaker Calvary. White, 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 five generic for a six, six. Spirit Knight with flying. Enters the battlefield. Creatures you control gain flying. You get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. So what do we think? This better or worse than Crater Hoof Behemoth? Crater Hoof, it give you trample. Tra so if you block, uh, sorry, buddy, you get smacked in the face anyway. Uh, Moon Shaker Calvary, however, you can block. Oh, sorry, you can block. It's harder to do that. There's not a lot of good flying blockers out there. And you will block all the damage, but you have evasion. So even if your opponent did have an opportunity to block, they can't soak up any damage. So you guys think it's better than Crater Hoof? So they just they just strictly made a better Crater Hoof. Look at this. It's the Nazgul. Look at this army in the sky. More of a fair version. Flying is greater than Trample. Somehow, I don't believe that. Like, what if you're up against a spirit deck? Sorry. Block. <laughs> then that'd be it. This only happens until end of turn. Next turn, your creatures suck. Doesn't have haste. Oh, that could be a deal breaker. Um, that that is weird. So this card doesn't attack the turn. Enters the battlefield. Creatures you control game flying. Get plus one plus one until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. Strictly worse. Now it's still a good card, though. I think it's a good card. It's a great card. It will fit in a lot of decks. It'll be a way of finishing the game through a lot of decks but like yeah the fact that it does not attack itself that I think puts it a stage clearly lower than crater hoof look in legacy I have died to a single crater hoof and like yeah just one crater hoof has killed me because the elf player put like a million creatures on the battlefield that how all had summoning sickness but the crater hoof could kill me in one shot for eight mana, well, you're gonna you're gonna cheat it and play. Come on, you're not gonna pay eight mana here. No one pays eight mana these days. Uh, green is greater than white. I heard somewhere that flying closes out more games than trample statistically. You know, it could be right. At, le at least in uh, commander. Steve Cooper, what do you got for us, Steve Cooper? We got virtue of blank cycle. Oh, there there's. There's a cycle here, is what you're telling me. Virtue of... Okay, we're gonna look at one. Let's look at the blue one. I'm always a fan of the blue. No, they're all... Are they all mythic? Blue for generic. Enchantment. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent, you control the trigger. That ability triggers an additional time. That's broken. Okay, uh, it's got Vantress Visions. Is Are these the first adventures on other card types? Because I think in the past, it was adventures on creatures. And this is an enchantment. Copy target activated or triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. That's also pretty cool. I like it. Huge fan. Virtue of knowledge is bonkers. Virtue of knowledge. Everyone. Okay, we're going to go look at virtue of knowledge. Uh, we were on virtue of knowledge. This is virtue of knowledge. So what was the other? Yeah, okay. So we went to the right one. It went on to an adventure. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense, really. Ja Jacob Thune, Splashy Spellcaster. Does it have a hat? Splashy Spellcaster. Um. Yes. Yes, it does. All right, blue, three generic. It's Actually, it's hard to tell. Maybe it's just a head and the whole thing. Maybe this is their hair. Okay, a blue, three generic for a two, four. Elemental Wizard. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a sorcerer roll token attached up to one other target creature you control. If you control another roll on it, put that one in blah, 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 blah. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has whenever this creature attacks, scry one. Uh, I think this card is crap. Its head is a hat. The whole head is a hat. Hat head. Oh, maybe the head is invisible. Maybe the head is supposed to be here. It's the invisible man, clothed in water. A, it's a sorting hat. Surfing hat. Yeah, sure. Okay, Satan's Cat 
fish. Uh, Regal. Oh, we look. I think we looked at Regal Bunicorn. Bunicorn. Yeah, that was a cute one. Who knows how good or bad that card's gonna be? Okay, Nicholas says Nikachu, the rolls are token enchantment auras, and you can't have two or more on the same creature. They cease to exist the moment they touch the graveyard, like all tokens. Try searching for them. Thank you so much. Can we, can we get some ro roll token? It's hard to find tokens on Scryfall. Roll, roll token. Maybe just I'm gonna look up roll. No, I can't find it. Sorry. I'm not gonna spend all day looking for it either. Bean pot horned. Horned something. Horned lock whale. Uh, blue, blue, four generic for a 6 6 whale. It's got flash and ward two. That's not bad. Uh, and when it enters the battlefield, it enters the battlefield tapped unless it's your turn. That is also irrelevant. Um, well, I guess it makes it harder as a blocker. Lagoon breach. This lagoon isn't even very big looking. Where does this thing hide? The owner of target attacking creature you don't control. Puts it on top of their uh, puts it on top or bottom of their library. That's great. I think this card's actually outright awesome. This card, first off, the ability is super relevant. It's card advantage because it's effectively getting rid of the card off the battlefield, and it's depriving. Even if they put it on top of their library, it's depriving your opponent out of, of a draw. The creature is damn big, and like, if your opponent's choked on mana, the ward two is actually going to be pretty uh, relevant. Where does the lock nest hide? Who knows. Ask the people that found them. I like this card. I think it's pretty cool. Um, where was a neat card somebody asked? Ninja! With Song of Toten Tans. Red X. Sorcery. Create X. 1-1 one, one black rat creature tokens with this creature can't block. Well, that's not good. Creatures of control gain haste until end of turn. I don't like it. Uh, this is just not a very appealing card to me. My creatures can't block, but they have haste. It just makes some tokens. Assuming I have a lot of mana, but if I have a lot of mana, what, why am I playing a token deck? Loch Ness is the lake. Oh! <laughs> Loch Ness is the lake, and the monster is the, the, the monster in Loch Ness. Lock equals lake. The water level drops when they surface. Aha. Uh -huh. <coughs> What's the point of having flash? Just to hold up mana? Bingo! Cha-ching! You got that right, Platonic Liquid. This is a normal blue thing blue players like to do. Don't spend any mana. Oh, you did nothing? Okay, here comes my horned lock whale. So, like, uh... So, hold on. Lo the lock... The lock Ness, or, like... So the lock is actually uh, canon in Magic the Gathering history. Akai Panda TV, love ya. Soul Cauldron slash Sleep Curse Fairy slash Cami Whisper Hope. What is, okay, well, I'm gonna look up only one of them. Unless there's several adventures on this. Oh, you're talking about the combo here. So you get Soul Cauldron, Sleep Curse Fairy. In the same set? Oh, oh, by the way, we can look at this card. This is a blue 3-3 three, three fairy wizard flying ward 2. That's insane. Now, there is one downside. There's the battlefield tapped with three stun counters on it. So every turn, you got to remove a stun counter and it stays tapped. But you do have the ability to pay two mana and untap the sleep cursed fairy. So late in the game, when you have nothing in hand, who cares? Just pay mana, untap this thing, and attack. It's basically an old, already flying Delver. And, like, hey, you invested on turn one. Maybe you don't even need to attack with it the first few turns. And eventually you start beating the air with a 3-3 creature. I think it's very interesting. So this thing has counters on it. And then, uh, what did you want to do? What was the idea here? And then Cami Whisper Hope. Uh, not from this set. Three mana, one, one. If one or more plus one plus one counters would be put on a permanent, you control that many plus one plus one counters are put on the permanent instead. At X, I don't get how this... If one... So I get what you want to buff up this thing with the Agatha Soul Cauldron? I guess. <laughs> Beef it up even more. 
Okay, Nicholas says the rat thing just gives everything haste for one red, right? Then it just gives you rats if you have more mana to go through. Yep, that's right. That's exactly how it works. That's infinite mana. Oh, it's infinite mana. Okay, gotcha. So you have three. Oh, it's a lot of it's a lot of work for infinite mana. Ag Agatha exiles fairy giving Kami untap ability. Aha! But that's a three mana infinite mana combo. There's plenty of two mana ones, right? Infinite mana and standard. Three mana I think is very fair for a combo. <laughs> then Space Pirate is like, I'm not a fan of this roll mechanic so far. Damn rolls. Okay, Spectral Maniac with, have we looked at Malevolent Witch Kite? So you got the word witch in here. Where's the witch? I just see dragon. Oh, it's a dragon witch. Okay, we have a black, black, four generic, five, four, with a flying. Uh, when enters the battlefield, sacrifice any number of artifacts, enchantments, and or tokens, then draw that many cards. That's awesome. So basically exchange your junk for treasure. Was there a fearsome witch around here, or was it a cruel dragon? The tales were, con oh no, Oswald Adventure. Uh, Christopher B with Ruby. Is that an actual card? Oh, there is. Ruby! Uh, green, red for a 1-2 human scout. Also incredibly well-dressed. Aren't you hot in all those clothes? Haste, whenever Ruby, Daring Tracker attacks while you control a creature with power 4 or greater, we get plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn, and we get to add mana. Honestly, this card... Oh, it has haste? Oh, it's so hard to evaluate a, a mana dork with haste. So you go turn 2... Play this out and play one more one drop for the turn. But the ability itself is not really that exciting. Whenever a creature, whenever Ruby Daring Tracker attacks while you control a creature with power four or greater, we so it's just a three four for two mana. Honestly, this is not that interesting. It's okay. It's okay, but it's a, I, I'm not super excited about it. It's a fleshy mana rock. It is a fleshy mana rock. That's true. Oh, do you know what? I, I didn't think about it that way. So it's like a mana rock with upside. Okay. It's a pass. You got to play mana rocks. You got to play your ruby daring tracker. If anything, in commander, the creatures have better protection than your artifacts. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. We got Olaf the Snowman. Virtue of Strength. All right, it's uh, seven mana. Okay, if you tap a basic land for mana, it produces three times that ma much mana instead. Okay, I take it back. Seven mana, it's worth it. What are you gonna do with this mana? Cast an Eldrazi? You have seven mana already in play. Garenbrig Growth uh, for a green. Sorcery Adventure. Return target creature or land card from your graveyard to your hand. That's okay. It's an okay card. So you got a regrowth attached to some enchantment that tri triples your mana. 21 mana all of a sudden. What's the jack in the beanstalk? Uh, I have no idea. Feels like a win more card. It absolutely is a win more card. <laughs> Create rats, of course. Basalt monolith infinite mana. Do you need mana at this point? I don't know. Some people, they just don't have enough mana. Always. Griffinix says, uh, imagine Lotus Field with this card. Uh, yeah, exactly. Ba oh, but it has to be a basic land. You have to tap a basic land for mana to get the triple. Otherwise, no, you don't get you don't get, get squat. Um, wait, let's look at Lord. Uh, sorry, King Ginger's Lord Skitter, the Sewer King. Sewer. What is this? A Rat Noble for three mana. Uh, the three. I think the Rat people are super thrilled about this new Eldrain set. Whenever another rat enters the battlefield under your control, exile up to one target card from an opponent's graveyard. All right, so far so good. At the beginning, uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a one-one black rat creature token with this creature can't block. It's Bitter Blossom. It's strictly better, Bitter Blossom. Its downside is the creature can't block, though. I think it's better Bitter Blossom, in my opinion. Bitter Blo the uh, fairy player should be incredibly jealous of this card. And also, it's a creature by itself. So Bitter, Blo Bitter Blossom doesn't get into the red zone, but Lord Skitter can. 
Yeah, on your and it comes at on your on combat on your turn. Create a one-one black rat creature token. Yeah, just can't block. That's all. Which honestly is a pretty crappy downside. But the bitter blossom, the creatures were killing you anyway. Bitter blossom costs one less, right? Yeah, but it can't get into the red zone. I think it's strictly better. And graveyard hates. That's right. All in one. It slices and dices. Does everything. Uh. Okay, Christopher B. With besotted knight. Furry? What? Besotted knight. Oh, it's a very furry creature. Yes. All right, we got a white three generic three three. That's it. That's pretty lame. You are no monster to me, my love. And uh, betroth the beast for a white sorcery adventure. Create a royal roll token attached to, your to target creature you control. I think this card sucks. This is awful. It's not even. It's not even remotely interesting. This is like draft chaff. Uh, that's a furry. It's a furry. <laughs> Everyone's mentioning it's a thir it's a furry. Is this an actual card? Throne of Eldraine? Oh! It is! Alright, five mana, legendary artifact. As Throne of Eldraine enters the battlefield, choose a color. I choose blue. Uh, at tap, add four mana of the chosen color. Whoops. Uh, spend this mana only to cast monocolored spells of that color. Perfect! Uh, tap, draw, sorry, pay three mana, tap, draw two cards, spend only mana of the chosen color to activate this ability. This card's great! I love this card. I'm putting it in my commander deck. I could use more mana. I could use more mana. I could use some card draw. Uh, my deck is mono blue. Wizzicle's getting crazy with these modern day mechanics. I remember when MTG had cards had two lines of text, or none, or it was all flavor text. Is going my, into my mono black artifacts EDH deck. I like the I like the sound of that as well. Monocolor EDH decks eating good with Throne. Yeah, Throne of Eldraine and what's it called? That what's that art? It was the Lotus Jeweled Lotus. Really happy they made that card. Turia, what do you got for me? Uh, we got Ah uh, Obira, Dreaming Duelist. Oh, this is that new busted fairy. It's a black, blue, 2-2 two, two flash flying. Whenever another fairy enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one. Okay, I can't say it's busted because this card does need to stay on the battlefield. But there's like, was it Slither Wisp or something? Or Sliv Sli Sliver Blade? Which is another flash creature that you like draw cards for having flash creatures. Like, I think this moves fairies in the right direction where maybe the fairies aren't that big. And by the way, they did buff up the fairies. Notice, they're like all two toughness three toughness creatures now instead of these puny one toughness creatures that just die to anything uh this is moving in the right direction you so you don't even need to get into the red zone just play fairies and make your opponents lose life reverse bitter blossom exactly see it, for anyone that thought bitter blossom was fine and that the cost was fair well this reverse bitter blossom is gonna you're gonna kill people once you realize that you kill people with the same effect you realize how Badly positioned Bitter Blossom is in your own deck. C. Tromsky. Experimental conf uh, experimental confection? Confectioner? Best food payoff? Experimental... Confectioner. Alright, we got the black two generic. Why is it that all the, the chefs are in black? It's like they only create poisonous food for some reason. Uh, like Asmerano, this experimental confectioner. Okay, black, two generic, two, three, human peasant. When experimental confectioner enters the battlefield, create a food token. Whenever you sacrifice a food, create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token with this creature can't block. I think that is very underwhelming. <laughs> Cooking is evil. Them calories. Nyah, 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 nyah. This, this, all this food goes with coffee. It's good stuff. Uh, what the hell is this? Er, er, Eriat. The charmed, the charmed apple. Again, more food. Black, white, one generic. And also f black. Remember, food and black. It's, it's, somehow that's a combo in. I guess it's always about making poison food in the fairy tales. 
Oh, poison apple. Poison this, poison that. Okay, uh, two for human warlock. Each creature that's enchanted by an aura you control can't attack you or planeswalkers you control. Each creature that's a enchanted by an aura you control can't attack you or... What the hell does that mean? Oh, so I give auras to my opponent and they can't attack me with those creatures. Interesting. But they can attack other people. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of auras you control in each card. I have a feeling it sucks. Like, you gotta fill your deck with a bunch of auras, so, like, what are you doing? But it's definitely a, definitely a commander card. Just make sure this thing stays on the battlefield. Her face is old in the reflection. What reflection? Oh, you mean, oh, on this side. She's got, like, a mirror, like, uh... Clothing. Lich Knight's Conquest has three art prints for a reason, trust me. Lich, uh, Knight's... Okay, let's look at all three of them. What is it? Black for generic sorcery. Sacrifice any number of artifacts. Any number. Uh, and enchantments and tokens. Return that many creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, here's picture number one. Actually, it's all the same. Okay, there's only one different art. There's an extended art. Okay, so we have the regular art. We got extended! And it actually extends for once. Yeah, they actually extended it. Before, they just blew up the image. And then we have one alternate art. Looks like getting stabbed in the eye or something. Gordon Ramsay would be a mono red card, yeah. This food is raw! Send it back! You donkey! Alright, putting this in the the gyome, honestly, I don't know what that is. Turn food into dragons and demons. I guess you can. It's a good it's a, a good exchange. Okay, let's look at Rowan. Oh, is there a new Rowan? Uh, Scion of War. Where is my Rowan? Uh, Scion of War. Wasn't Rowan just red? Okay, we have a red, a black, one generic, four, two, human wizard with menace. Uh, tap spells you cast this turn that are black and or red cost X less to cast, where X is the amount of life you lost this turn. Activate only as a sorcerer. I think this is a weird mechanic. I gotta lose life to get my, to get a discount on the cards that I cast? A little bit too, a little, little, little awkward. In my opinion. Uh, hold on, did we do this one? I'm so sorry, Jacob. Lord Skitter's Butcher. Rats in hats. Lord Skitter's... Oh, it, is, it does have a hat. It's, um... What is that movie with the mouse? Ratata? Ratatouille or something like that? Black 2 generic 2 3 rat peasant. When Lord Skitter's butcher enters the battlefield, choose one. Create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token with... Uh, Why well, I can only choose one? Because you... Okay, so we make a 1-1. One, one. Or we can sacrifice another creature. If you do, scry two, then draw a card. Probably sacrificing another rat, if you ask me. Creatures control gain menace until end of turn. That is an interesting card. It's probably like a really good, like what's it called, draft card. So it was Ratatouille, yeah. I bring you Ratatouille to Magic the Gathering. And with that music, you know what that means. It means the show's over. But it's not, Coffin MTG never ends, because we do this every Monday to Friday, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. You want to be part of the show? Show up at that time. Is there any cards you're excited about of, from the wilds of Eldraine that you're wild about? You can always share our, your opinion of them in the comment section below. Don't forget to share your combos with that weird new card. Thank you very much for the, all of your support. Everyone who's a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, but importantly, the people who super chat during the show to help contribute and be part of the coffee crew, but we also have to thank the coffee crew that shows up every morning. People like Abzo, Toads, TCG Dude. We got Steve. Where's Steve Cooper? I lost ya. Steve Cooper, Akai Panda, Sapphire SMG. We got the what? First Spang, Spang King Ginger, Platonic Liquid Slavin, Christopher B. Of course, Spectral Maniac, El Grand Fatso, Liquid Soulfly. Because as usual. So you guys, I have no show. The coffee crew makes it every single day, so keep brewing up them coffees, and we will keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup.